Okay, we're throwing that crank right on the edge of this shoreline here because it doesn't look like the water is very deep, which is only about five or six foot. But that's where the fish are spawning in that area. And uh, you drag out by that nest and they'll generally grab it. But what we want to do is just, if you know they're in that area and you just keep casting by them and by them and a lot of times they'll just, they'll just clobber that thing They'll just get mad at it. It really hit it. Look that little one right there. It's just a little small. They're on that shoreline right against there. These are probably little males because those bigger females in there. See, he smacked at that thing and just missed it. So the fish are not near as active as they have been. If you'll notice over in the background, I think you'll see the old cows. It's uh, laying down and I kind of go by that those old cows ain't up moving around we don't seem to catch as many fish so and some of these fish we're catching are mainly small fish and mostly the more active fish and the little bigger fish I don't think is as active right now I'll give them about another hour I hope and we catch a few of them but when the more cows are laying down like that why I'm not, I don't get too excited about the fish bite neither. This is a good spawning area for the bass right in here. They got deep enough water to spawn in, and enough gravel. Well, there's a little one right there. Oh man, they are jumping today. Hold on a second, I'll just lift him right here. Boy, we barely got him hooked. We pull him around right here, right in real easy. Boy, them fish are, I want you to look how fat them fish are. Get that hook out. Look at the belly on them things. That's probably a little male there. That was a little female we turned loose earlier. Got chunky them fish are in, the, in excellent shape. Let's turn that back in. Don't hold him out of there too long. There's people that are watching wonder why we're not fishing back in the back of those little cuts and coves right there. Well, the water in there is about six inches deep and we can't get in there, but the fish have been laying right on the outside of it and not back in them. Now the longer, deeper coves which we'll fish some later on today. Why they're holding some fish for there's a little deeper water in the back. But those right in there, there's a little fish right there. See? Yeah, oh man, I told you them things. When they get on, they're hot. Oh. They just don't like to be caught, I guess. It's holding their fish. I'm using only eight pound test line. He ate that lure, look at there. Let me get down here. We'll see if we can get him in here. Turn that fish loose. That's probably a female. Look at, where she, look, look at the rub marks on her. Get down here now. Don't jump and get my hand in, in there and get my hand in them hooks. There we go. Talking about rub marks. See these right here? See the fin right here? And the red, they've been rubbing on that bottom. They've been working those nests over. Boy, she ate that lure too. Let's see if we can get that out of there without hurting her. There we go. That's a pretty nice bass right there. Need about 10 of them in the tournament. Let's let her go back and not keep her out of the water because that's a female there. Let's see if we can catch another. I'm kind of paralleling the shoreline here now, and, and, and that way I can cover a little more of it. It, it with that, not saying you wouldn't want to cast into shoreline. Let me explain something. A lot of people think you got to cast a mile, which John is good at it. I'm talking about John Shaw, that is, and uh, but it isn't necessarily the long cast that catches that Mr. Bass. It's a, or any fish. 
is putting that lure in the right place and presenting it to him. It doesn't necessarily have to be long, long. When you make a cast, make it count. Just because he's open water there, figure out what that lure is doing under the water. Just because it's open water, just don't cast because the water is there. Try to read your shoreline. If you think there's mud bank or rock bank, kind of like we're fishing now, or a few stick ups in there, then try to present the lure and put it right on shore, like, it, like it's coming right off of that shoreline. We're about to come to the rose end up here for his fishing because you get get a little further up and that water is only going to be about four foot deep and all it's going to do is be silt and mud. Okay, there's a little one right there. That's a nice fish. And just get him in. Could be a catfish too. <laughs> No, it that pulled more like a bass in. Stand down though like a catfish. <laughs> Get out of my boat. Stay out from underneath the boat. That's a pretty nice bass. Come here, fish. Come here, fish. Look at there. He ain't wore out, he ain't even gonna jump. Just hold on there. And what couldn't I caught that in that tournament the other day, huh? Come here, fish. Come here. I just don't you flop and I start taking you out and stick him hooks in me. Just a minute. And you eat that thing good. That's a pretty nice bass right there. You go a little bit three, a little better. The mouth on that thing. One of the bigger females, we're gonna put her back in the water. Maybe we can catch some more like her here in a little bit. When you catch them like that, it makes a day worthwhile. We've been fishing this crankbait here a little bit this morning here at San Carlos, and we just want to show you the basic colors that we've been using on it, which this is a little small shad wrap. I believe this is number five, which we got a lot of goldfish in this lake. We caught some fish on it a while ago, but uh, earlier, we would give you another example. is a real popular bait, and this is a little honeybee, not the killer bee. It's a little diving honeybee, and it's, it's bagless, and I've always liked that chartreuse and a black back, which the water here is pretty murky, and this will show up very plain in the, in the murky water. Now, the sun's out a little brighter now and up, so I, that's one reason I switched to the crawdad here, or another one is the old crawdad bagley. Now, there's another one, it's a little crawdad and chartreuse on it, but just plain old crawdad, kind of like I've got right here. And those are basic colors you need in this murky water. And we're going to fish a little further down this shoreline here and see if we can come up with a fish. Before we start here, cranking these baits, you want them right against the shore. The water's, the water's fairly shallow in five to ten foot of water, and the, most of the fish are right on the bank. And you just crank along the boulders and the edge of the rocks you see here. There's a lot of bait fish in the water, a lot of shad in here. And we're going to fish right along the edge of the shoreline and do not crank this very hard because if you do, the smaller baits will turn over and over. You don't get the action you need out of them. So just give it a medium crank, kind of bump the bottom along. If the fish hits it and miss it, just kind of pull it a little bit and stop it and start to crank again. A lot of times he'll turn, he thinks he's hurt it. He'll turn around and, and uh, come back and pick it up. Like I said, on the shallower water, don't crank it very hard and you don't need a big, deep running crankbait. We may try a deeper runner later on on some other structure, but right now we're gonna, we're gonna try the smaller stuff right along this shoreline, see if we can catch Mr. Bass out of there. There ought to be one right in the edge of that right there. 
There you go. Just a small fish. Yo. Man, he's jumping every place. Burger about a pound, pound, uh, might go a pound. He was right off the end of that break out there. If you won't jump till I can get you in the boat, we'll just turn you back. Man, that was a real active fish there. There might be another little one out there. Let me get him off of here. We'll try it before we go here. That fish wasn't about a foot of water. And I got a bug in my eye, but I guess that's all right. As long as it don't bother me catching fish. See a lot of bait fish down there, and I don't know what we got here. I don't know what it is. We got us a catfish, right? Right there in that mess of shad we can see on that LCR there. I bet you see how, see how the rod's shaking there? But the bass would be more steady pull, that's what it is. Let me get him over here where I can get him. Don't want to lose that lure. Come here, fish. Come here. Well, look at all that slime he got on that line. I want to get, make sure I get him, not my hook. He don't get me. Come here. Lifting me. Boy, he ate that thing too. Look at that slime all over that line. What these fish do, these catfish, they'll move up in that shallow water to eat the eggs of the bass and carp or anything else, but they also move up in there to spawn their cell. And this time of year, well, it's pretty common to catch, to catch quite a few catfish. And uh, then later on in the year, you don't catch as many unless you're fishing a little deeper and out. San Carlos is sure known for its channel cat. Turn around here and get a better hold on him. I'm gonna bring no pliers with me this trip. So, we just have to work it out of there the best we can. A lot of people get up here and they'll hook, hook something that says it broke their line and run off with it and everything else. And most of the time, it's a lot of times why well, it's these big old whiskers. Or they can, state record flatheads out of here, as a matter of fact, it weighs 65 pounds. So you know there's some pretty good size fish in here if his ancestors are here. I'd be pretty good with some hush puppy, but I think we're gonna let him go today. Turn him back in here. He don't even know he's loose. He's still trying to swim along the side of the boat. Check her line here and get all that slime off of it. Yeah, we still okay. Yeah, we'll try that again. Maybe this time we can catch a bass. Down the side of that, there ought to be one right in there. Okay. I'll tell you one thing, I figured it'd be on these points out here because, well, it really ain't a point. It's just kind of a flat, comes out and drops off a little bit like we've been fishing most of the day. Where you at, fish? There you are. Come back here too. Ooh, get out of that trolling motor. Get out of that trolling motor. Nice. See, they just slapping at that. They don't really have them really, really good in their mouth. Bring it back around there a little bit and see if I can lift him up. He's pretty small. He, I think what they're doing, they just, while they're hungry or not, I think they just, Slapping at that thing, this fish has been hooked before. Been turned back, hook mark in him. Tell you one thing, didn't shed, I can see that. Put him back in there. 
let him go swimming again. Get over here and make a little cast right, right around this bush over here. So right over on that point, maybe we can break a little one off of there and there. Yeah, boy, I'll tell you one thing. Oh, look at that. Look at that little sucker jump, I'll tell you. Come on, one more time. No, he ain't gonna do it. You got him caught in the gill, so he probably won't jump anymore, of course. Let me ease him in here and get that out of there. I don't want to hurt him. There we go. Man, they must be tons of fish that size in here. Yep. Pull that one out there. Boy, you got a hook good fish. He's right out there on that on that point. Hooked a real good fish. I think it was a catfish. And he got off there, and then we threw right back in there. He got that got that smaller fish there. It's kind of skinny. He might have done spawned out. Well, swing it back around over there and see if there's one more over there. Before I do that, I'll cast through that shallow water right there. Well, I tell you what, you never would know a few years ago or a lot of years ago that there was a railroad running right down through here. It's kind of hard to believe, ain't it? Fish are in such shallower water using those smaller baits, and that's what we've been catching them on. A little fish on there. I didn't think water was too shallow in there to hook one, but there was still a fish in there. Just hanging right around the edge of that point there. Come on in there, fish. Look how they're eating that thing. Now, that, see, he hit that thing, and he hit it really hard. Get it in there just a little bit. It's a little, a little better fish right there. Hook out of there. That made it pretty good right there. Just a little sharp break right out there, and they seem to be the only spot. That's three fish we caught off that little old spot right there. What it is, it comes out and it comes into a sandy area and it's a good place for them to waylay their, to ambush their fish, their bait fish that they're feeding on. And we know there's a lot of shad in there. And there's another one in there too. Just stay there, fishy, don't come up on me. All just stacked right in there on that one little point. That's the first one of them we found like that today. That's a pretty nice fish. Just stay on there, let get you in a boat. You like to do it on Bassmaster, just hoist them right out of that water, except they got 20 pound test line, we got eight. And that fish, it really got some color to him there. Looks like a spotted bass and there he's got so much color. Now look how fat that nut is and long and skinny and there's got a lot more fish on it. A lot more spots. Floyd, I see you got your yellow jackets out. Why don't you tell the folks what we're gonna do today? Okay, well this is kind of a yellow jacket weather. You can see it's sprinkling rain, a little windy, and it's cloudy, and the fish have kind of moved into the shallows, John, so and today we'll probably mainly use the black with a chartreuse blade because in the water's a little discolored. Mm -hmm. It's clearing up from what it has been. Some people like the fluorescent orange uh, or maybe the white. My personal one, I like the black gold and the, and the red and yellow with a silver blade. But today, like I said, being a darker day and the chartreuse, uh, chartreuse uh, work real real good generally on those days. And you gotta remember one thing, we gotta crank them pretty slow. So don't get no hurry today, okay? Floyd, why don't you uh, tell the folks at home uh, about the yellow jacket. Show them how you let it about 12 inches off. 
the yeah, tip of the rod. I cast anywhere from 6 to 12 inches. Just give it a little quick flip like that. Generally, I'll take the slack up, let it sink to the bottom. Right there's the bottom, then I'll just give it a quick little turn. And don't, just not a steady retrieve. Just pull it back, let it sink a little bit. Just kind of bounce, especially this time of year. In the summertime, you can uh, be a little more active on it. They'll, you know, but this time of year, just kind of slow her down, work it slow. And, and right now, it's not a big jerk on it. It's not a big jerk on the lure. They just kind of grab it and come and with you, and it'll feel like it's in the moss. And when it does, just crank it. So he'll be there. Floyd, so, there's your old buddy up there, Chief Apache. Yeah. It, that thing is amazing to me because a lot of people just don't, in Arizona, they don't know it's here, you know, they nobody's ever showed them. And uh, I think that's where Apache Lake got its name from that. Because if you can look at the high point there, you can see it's, uh, see the nose and to the left his eyebrow and his headdress on down the mountain there. We can't see it real good from right here. Then you can see to the right, you can see his mouth, his chin. And good old Chief Apache. Yep. I think that's where Apache got his name. I'm not for sure. So sounds don't. good to me, even if it didn't. That, that yeah. sounds like about the best, you know, Chief well, Apache up that's there. Well, that's what I'd have named him after. <laughs> I tell you, this wind, uh, Chief Apache, let's get this wind down a little bit. Yeah. It's been a tough day. We're catching a few fish here and there, but this wind is like doing murder. A rain, doing a rain, rain dance there with a little it, fish. You got him. We got him right here. Yeah, here we go. Oh, man. Here we go. You Boy, need to net climb on that thing. Whoa. Come on up there, Mike. In. I don't want to get off there. I don't want to mess it up. Okay. Good stuff, Lord. Oh, look at him jump, Mike. I can't tell, but come on, out there, Lord. All right, Lord. I just want to pull us off of that area because we might come back and catch another one on that. Okay. I'm gonna run the trolling motor or what? Yeah, I got him. Not yet, Ooh, Mike. Not whoa! Come around this side. Here he's coming. He's come. Where is he? I don't know where he's at. But he's 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 hot. I'll tell he's you that. He's a hot fish. He's a hot fish. Come on, dragging her real slow. <laughs> Whoa! Under the boat. He's a nice fish. Come on, come on. Let me get that boat out. He's boy. a nice fish. He ain't coming up yet. He's no. not coming up. Yeah, yet. bigger fish sometime will nice come job, up. Nice job, boy. Bigger fish sometime will come Don't up. Don't turn us around, or else we'll get into that wind on him, Mike. Okay, I'll keep it. Uh, oh man, is he in there? <laughs> I ain't even seen him. I ain't seen him. I know, I ain't seen, seen him. come out of the water at one time. time. Here, he comes. Here he is. Whoop, I believe that, that large male? No, he looks yeah, small. Yeah, no, it's small, small, small male. It's large male. There he is. Whoop, here he comes. That's large male. Large male. Here he is, yeah. right here. There, there he go. is. Oh, he's bringing a nice him back. One. Bringing him back. Here he comes. Burn got him. Oh, not yet. He's there you are. Oh, come on, come on. Coming right there. All right, flood. Okay, that yellow jacket gets largemouth, smallmouth, well, gets them all. He ain't quite as big as the 8 4 I caught on it, but beggars can't be choosers. That's I guess. right, that's right. He's a nice fish. Yeah, he yeah. has a nice tight little belly there. Floyd, why don't you really get, get down and tell the people real, you know, a whole lot of information about your yellow jacket here. Well, we're going to fish something a little bit different right here. In other words, we got a point behind us right here. We're sitting in like about 38 well right now with 14 foot right here it drops to 38 40 foot and we've mainly been fishing all the rest of the day earlier today we had fished the shallows with little cuts and uh, the wind had forced us in there so we had to fish them whether we wanted to or not so uh, and that's where we caught quite a few of the other smallmouth it's cloudy it's mist and rain and we caught them on the black body with a short tooth blade play. But we're going to be fishing this, which drops off a little more over behind us here. And this point right over here is going to drop into to real deep water real quick. I don't think they can see our depth finder. But see, we started at 12 feet. And now we're at 24, and it's going to drop into about 40. And, I, That's and uh, good. That's a good tip right there. Uh, one other thing, Floyd. A lot of people see all the, how we have the yellow jacket, maybe 24 inches off the tip of your rod like that. The reason for that is so you could throw the bait further. If you have it too yeah. tight, explain it to the folks. Have it too it. tight and bring it back, and most people just don't whip it like this. And if you, and you drop that down another six, eight inches, and you get a lot more leverage and cast a, quite a bit further with it. And you do not need, need a swivel. There's a, there's a ball bearing uh, swivel on there, and don't don't waste your money putting another swivel on there. Just tie it directly right onto the bed. Tie it directly on there. 
and it just works great. Let's try this little area here, Floyd. See what we could do. We we'll to catch one off of this. Is there any other any other thing before we uh, we start fishing again to uh, tell the people about the to retrieve or when it hits the water? You look for a, a bow in the line. Make sure you're on the bottom. Can you right. give some of the information yeah, on like that? Like we're fishing this point here, you cast across it. I generally pull it three or four foot, and to get the blade moving, and I'll just let it settle to the bottom, pick it up, and work it till it gets to about probably ten foot of water. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to then I'm going to retrieve the bait back very slow because most of the fish we're catching <clears throat> is ten foot or less. So why fish the unproductive water? So when it, I throw it right against the bank, I pull it three or four feet so it don't hang up as soon as it hit the water. If it's aggressive fish, the area grab it. If it don't, let it sink to the bottom. And this kind of a slow retrieve, maybe stop, a little pause, and start it again. Don't just throw it out there and go 90 mile an hour. Another away. thing I noticed, Floyd, fishing with you a lot on the yellow jacket is your right hand. So you never mention that to anybody. Well, it's unconsciously. Uh, right? <laughs> what Floyd does, I've noticed, he doesn't even know he's doing it. When he's reeling in his yellow jacket, real nice and slow, he has his right hand, a little movement on the right hand to make the bait go a little more erratic. And I've noticed, I've tried that, and I've caught more fish with the yellow jacket. So let's... Uh, Just it's just something I've picked up, and I do that with a crankbait, too. Uh -huh, I noticed that, too, buddy. You don't get it by me. Let me touch your hat, and we'll get some good luck here. Hopefully. Okay. Catch a few fish. John, what, we, what we've got here, like I said, is a steep drop-off, and it's fairly shallow here. What I'll do is do is make a cast up in the shallow water first, work it a little bit, pull it out, let it fall down a little bit like that. Mm -hmm. And just work the shallow part first. If we don't get bit, mm -hmm. then what I do, then I'll just start working uh, out where the water's a little deeper and uh, work it out to about 10 or 12 feet, because that's about 12 feet's about the maximum we, that we fish today. And okay. really, we, we've caught everything. Like right now, we're six to eight foot, and we've caught everything, John, within. Six to, eight, six to ten foot yeah, of water. That seems to be the, the range we're caught. catching so, again. Now there's a lot of fish out there. There's a lot of fish out there at uh, at uh, 25 to 35 foot. But those are sure not as easy to there catch. There you go. Hold on. Just take them easy. Wait, let me set the I don't know how big like he is. Remember before we thought we had a little one. We had a good one. Just oh, he feels good, boy. Look at him. Look at him. Look staying look at under. Come on. Come on. You know, that might be a largemouth. He's staying down. Oh, there he is, here he is. Hold on a second. Yeah. Whoa. <clears throat> All right. There you go, John. All right. Yeah. Just hold on to him. I got, got him. him. I got him. He just barely he didn't have him. Oh, barely he didn't have had, too good. Uh, barely didn't had him that too fish. good. That fish didn't even, he wouldn't even jump. That's I like know. that largemouth did on us. Let's see if I can get this undone. Floyd went on, hooked that yeah. baby off of me. He really ate that baby. He looked like I just had him hooked. Whoa. <laughs> he wasn't hooked. You're just pulling the wrong way. All right. Another little patchy smallmouth. Let's put that bad boy in. I was doing just what you told me there, and all of a sudden, bang, he picked it up. Get back in here. Watch this fish, folks. He's going to get back in that water. Go. There he goes. Oh, there you go. Smallie. Woo. Okay. You're right, the silver and uh, the gold blade, I mean mm -hmm. the silver blade with the yellow body and red. So Floyd, on the speed, like that time, I was really just about to feel the blades moving. Do you like have I'm any uh, advice for anybody how well, fast to crank uh, these yellow well, jackets? The main in? thing is, this time of year, and just don't crank it that hard. Just like that. Now the boat's going uh, with me, so I'm going to crank it a little faster on this. For, right here because I'm pulling this way and the boat's going that way, so I gotta crank it a little faster to make it move. And what what a person needs to do is realize the pressure that he has on the rod. Realize the pressure that he has on that rod and try to, when he catches that fish, and try to duplicate that same pressure all the time, whether the boat's going with it or from it. You're going from it. And Come just, around and tell people that. And then just it. hold it, you know. And just hold that, hold, hold it if you're going from it. Just hold it. Just hold it and let it drift. Well, you, and you keep the same pressure. If the boat happened to be going towards the lure, then you may have to crank a little faster to take up the slack. But keep about the same pressure on that rod at all times. John, I'm going to try right across this little sandy area okay. right here, too. Let that sink down a little bit. Yeah. Uh-oh. 
Hold on, John. What you got, buddy? I don't know, but he feels it. He's well, shaking the, his head. I, let me get I know out of the way. Let me get Up out of the way. Comes. Let me get out of the way. Is okay. Holy smokes, let me get the net. I'll get the net. Hold on. Get the net. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. He sure is shaking. It's a good, good fishing rod, boy. Whoa. 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 Oh, man. Oh, man. Look at that. There's a mouth on that thing. Oh, he was coming right towards yeah. you, too. Yeah, yeah I oh, didn't man. think it was such a big yeah. fish. Here he is. <laughs> Hold it, John. Don't don't make a stab at him. All right, all right. I want you to get control him and get him near. If you can't oh, control him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at him. Man. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. He was right in there against him, that shallow him water. That watch, him, watch him shake oh, that head. Watch out. Whoa, easy. Look at <laughs> Hold it. Come I on. can't grab it because I only got yeah, six pound test I'm, line. I'm, I'm not going to hit him with the net yeah. either. I've seen that happen before. <laughs> oh, here he is. He's getting tired now. No, nope, yeah. he's still got a little. Bring him in. Bring him in. Just take your time. All right. <laughs> Telling you to take your time. <laughs> I'll just wait until you get him up. Whoop, 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 whoop. Come out of that trolling get, motor. Yeah, get up here. Come out of that trolling motor. Here he is, here he is. Come All on, right. hold his head up. We got, got him, we got him, we got him. All right. Oh, Floyd, nice fish, nice fish. All right, Gunny. Well, you're doing good today, buddy. Quality right. fish. How nice. about that? Look at that bad boy. Well, I'll say it's about three, three and a half. Yeah, it goes three, three, and I don't think it goes three and a half. Between Good three, three, three and a quarter. I'd take him any time in the tournament, or just fun fishing, or just Where fishing. was he an all-star? Hey, he'll be there one of these days. Yep. You know, he'll be there one of these days. That's look at that man. beautiful fish. Look at the spots on that thing. I love it. That's a beauty. Well, we're in the catch and release, folks, so we're going to let that bad boy go. Let's see him swim away. There he goes. Good boy. Yeah. Yeah. Floyd, you're amazing, buddy. This guy's amazing. Yeah.